this week, the Amsterdam City Council, uh, which is now a majority left-wing anti-racist legislative body, passed a resolution to prepare for an a formal apology on behalf of the Dutch capital and all the descendants of enslaved Africans to be delivered on Ketikoti next year, the 1st of July. Right? So we know that during its golden era of the 18th century, the city of Amsterdam found its place among the wealthiest cities of the world, and it still is, it continues to be so. It profited from the slave trade and the production of essential and luxury goods on the backs of enslaved Africans. In preparation for the apology for the period of one year, so from now until next year, until July 1st, 2020, Amsterdam will sponsor scientific research on the exact role of the city in slavery and the impact it has had. This, what happened in Amsterdam this week, follows the passing of a resolution, as Alex mentioned earlier, in March by the European Parliament on reparations and apologies, entitled Call to End Racist Discrimination Against Afro-Europeans in the European Union. Yeah, and it was passed by an overwhelming majority of deputies. And the document speaks of apologies, an end to racial profiling by the police, increased subsidies for Afro-Europeans in education, in the job market, and other areas. And this in turn, of course, going back to 2013, closer to our home here in the CARICOM, the Caribbean community, in 2013, the CARICOM Reparations Committee was established and headed by Sir Hilary Beckles, now Vice Chair of the University of the West Indies and author of uh, the book, Britain's Black Debt, Reparations for Caribbean Slavery and Native Gen Genocide, which is a fundamental text for anyone in the Caribbean to read in order to understand the arguments for reparations, economic justice in favor of those who suffered the most and who today pay the consequences of slavery. These being our societies which were colonized by European powers. Chattel slavery, the kidnapping of our ancestors from Africa, the torture and colonial denomination, uh, domination needs to be conceived as a crime against humanity. Those European countries who participated in the slave trade and colonized countries where slavery represented a significant portion of the economy should be held accountable. And so here on St. Martin, we do not speak of one power that is responsible, but two and even three, because why do we speak English, right? Uh, so we're talking about at least three European powers being responsible uh, or can be held accountable for uh, the condition in which we live, and I'll, I'll get to that soon. But the CARICOM called uh, for the national community in every country to be set up so that every country of the CARICOM, there'll be a national committee um, to establish a moral, ethical, and legal case for the payment of reparations by the governments of all the former colonial powers and the relevant institutions of those countries to the nations and people of the Caribbean community for the crimes against humanity of native genocide, the transatlantic slave trade, and a racialized system of chattel slavery. So what does this document entail? There are 10 points. They call it the 10-point plan for reparations. All right? This is adopted by all those independent countries around us here in the Caribbean. One is a formal apology, right? uh, which is necessary for a healing process of the victims and descendants of enslaved and enslavers. And I would like to add, there's something missing in this document. Not only do we talk about slavery and chattel slavery of our African ancestors, but also indentured servitude of the Hindustani population in the Caribbean. Second is repatriation, because there are groups, very small, very small groups, that want to repatriate, want to return to Africa. And there were communities, uh, and recently Ghana has opened the door for descendants of Africans to go back. 
Third is indigenous people's development program because there are some indigenous populations throughout uh, the independent Caribbean. Fourth is cultural institutions so that the government uh, must support the cultural institutions that uh, uplift uh, the legacy of our African ancestors, uh, but also recognize um, these to prepare uh, citizens for understanding the, uh, the consequences of slavery. And then from this point on, we go into the health crisis, right? The public health crisis that exists in the Caribbean has actually existed for a long time. So that's number five. The African descendant population in the Caribbean has, according to these documents, the highest incident in the world of chronic diseases from hypertension. We know these in our family. And guess what the second one is? Diabetes. Diabetes. Um, and so attention needs to be given uh, to that uh, because of the conditions of work uh, not so much imposed on our answers, but what we have been used to throughout the entire process of uh, colonization. And so number six would be illiteracy eradication. Okay. Uh, European governments have the responsibility to participate in efforts to make sure that illiteracy is eradicated and education is being supported. Seven is the African knowledge program. And it is an exhortation to uh, have schools, uh, all kinds of cultural uh, uh, events or institutions or instances, uh, also communities of faith, uh, to look at uh, the knowledge that we have inherited from our African ancestors, the knowledge that has been ignored or suppressed. Uh, uh, that made major contributions uh, to science, uh, culture, and, and knowledge. Number eight was psychological rehabilitation. Uh, only, says the document, a repertory justice approach to truth and educational exposure can begin the healing, the process of healing and repair. Because when we talk about slavery, we talk about colonialism, we're essentially talking about a violent process a violent process uh, that continues to the day. Yeah? If we are not racist, yeah, then we cannot say that Caribbean people are essentially violent. Rather, our societies have historically been violent. Right? Number nine, technology transfer. For uh, 400 years, the trade and production of policies of Europe uh, could be summed up in the British slogan, not a nail is to be made in the colonies. And that goes back to the idea that the Caribbean, just like Africa, is a place of natural resources and production and technology to be developed in Europe uh, or later in the North, in, in, North, uh, in, in North America, outside of uh, the Caribbean. We've been denied the right to develop our societies, to develop ourselves uh, technologically. And when individuals have the opportunity to go study in the North, how easily they are enticed by the technological advances of those societies to make them want to stay in Europe. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin powering your home and our economy.
Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. To the presentation made, made by the Minister of Finance, whereby the funds from UTS sale, he explained, will go to the police and will cover telemetry arrears and alleviate some social needs. While I have empathy for those good fellows of the police department, men and women that are protecting us, but I find it also that the priorities are not set right because it's the patrimony of St. Martin. It belongs to all of us and not only a few. So the way the, the, the Minister of Finance, his explanation pertaining um, how they're going to distribute this fund, I find it highly unfair to the rest of the society. Why I'm saying it is because if you're going to take 12 million guilders from the 21 million and give that to Telem for your arrears, I think that the government could find other areas in settling her bill with Telem also. And 8 million is going to cover the police. What happens then to custom? What happened to the other civil servants? What happened to other people that have other social need that we need to also assist with their living conditions, etc. So we would like to not only ask them to reconsider this because it is highly unfair, it is not based on, on equality, but it is based on um, they leveraging um, a sort of favoritism in a particular area where this is concerned. No, we will say distribute the money more fairly as possible. And we maybe suggest, we believe that at least five million guilders can be put aside for the housing problem we are having. And even if we have to build back better and stronger, that at least 100, 150 homes can be remodeled on time so we can, they can, these families can, can enter their home or live peacefully for, for during this hurricane season. That is at least what, what we believe can be done. We believe also deeply that the youth of St. Martha has been neglected, highly. And we believe that at least government can put two million guilders in the Ministry of Youth uh, and, 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 and Sports and Culture, because culture has been um, neglected, the youth has been neglected, and sport also is, is, is lagging behind where the facilities are concerned put at least two, million, two to three million guilders where that is concerned. So I'm talking here on that at least eight million guilders can go to, to causes that we know we are reinvesting the money into the society, into our people, whereby we are elevating their, 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 their way of, of living, their condition. Part of the money is being invested into the youngsters. We are occupying them with meaningful and productive um, you know, things in life, etc., and also where we are boosting the culture and, and sports where that is concerned. We're looking at there's an upcoming St. Martin Day coming, and this St. Martin needs it. Some may say, oh, it's just a day. It means a lot to us because we've been so fragmented in occupying the issue about the, 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 after the Hurricane Irma that people are just somewhat lost and they are trying to find themselves. I believe this is a good moment based on this money that is coming from UTS 
put his money into the Ministry of Youth and Sports Culture, whereby they can truly try to galvanize the people of St. Martin and bring back a sort of a pride for the St. Martin Day, you understand me? Whereby not only a good celebration, but a sense of bringing people under one flag, because we know it's many nations, but let us talk about one flag, which is the St. Martin flag, it's the island of St. Martin. So I believe that the minister can at least put an eight million guilders available, five for homes, and put two to three million into youth sports and culture and then we can look and not to forget the other social needs that are needed so he made one million guilders available to take care of some social needs i find that is ridiculous and i find that they are really really showing a disconnect between themselves and the society because here uh, they have taken they are or willing to take care of our good men and women in uniform to the tune of 8 million guilders and to the Telem group for 12 million guilders. And we believe it is a complete disconnect because to the rest of the civil servantry, to the rest of the population which is in dire need of home repair, stabilizing of life, homes without food, etc. So we think that this money needs to be somewhat more fairly distributed. And that's what we have to say where this topic is concerned, that allocate also at least two to three million guilders for extra social services beside those two areas that we mentioned, which is the, the youth and sports and taking care of the St. Martin Day, and also the five million guilders we believe should go directly into home repairs. Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. Alright, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Who you're for? the state secretary heading down to St. Martin, advertising in every media outlet you can find, every page you open on social media. There is the picture popping up and an invitation to tune in Wednesday morning, 8 o'clock, for a State of the Union address by State Secretary President Raymond Knops. Because he and he only can tell the people of St. Martin what is happening with the reconstruction of St. Martin. Only he can, because the Council of Ministers are not capable. The Reconstruction Bureau, the, the, the National Reconstruction Bureau that is set up, they can't. Only he can. And I can bet my last five guilders I got in my pocket, that when he makes his address, 
is again to intimidate the people. The government, he doesn't have to intimidate anymore. Because by the mere sound of his name, they shiver. And some of them even say yes. Before they even know the content and the ramifications of some of the conditions, yes, we approve all. Yes, send it. Yes, implement it. Yes, do it. And then when we hear the minister saying, there's only one donor we got. There's nobody else in the world wants to help St. Martin. So what do you want me to do? If there's only one donor, I got to accept everything. So tomorrow when they say, ministers, cut cost. Stop wearing suits and ties. Wear a wire bearer, which is too expensive maybe. Wear a t-shirt, wear jean pants, and go to work. Go to work. Save expenses. Ministers, don't. Ministers, don't. And ministers are going to say, yes, yes, master. Yes, yes, master. That is what we are going to continue hearing. And we cannot, we cannot continue this way. The state secretary wants to intimidate the politicians or the government. They have already done so. And now they got to, the next step is to rile the people up against government. That's how you destabilize a country. Get the people to rise up against their government. Get the people to rise up against their politicians, the people who they vote for, the people who they put their trust in, the people who they put forward to elect to represent them. Make them look bad. And while at least two MPs so far before me, I have already addressed it on a radio program two weeks ago. The elephant in parliament, the elephant in government, and the elephant that will be walking all over St. Martin, and I'm sure it's part of the reconstruction discussion. MPs that live in solidarity. One of the papers today, an editorial, an opinion, they got to be in solidarity. Because if MPs push back, then they, they have a, an opportunity to tell the people, you see, those MPs, they have no goods. They're living like fat cats at a big salary. But you, what you got? You, what you got? They don't want to hand in. They don't want to. But in the rush to accept, in the rush to accept conditions, the government is not even seeing, just like back then with the Integrity Chamber, legislation, what the Integrity Chamber was and is, is the responsibility of parliament. Government has no business signing an agreement guaranteeing the passing of a legislation. All government can say is, I will submit the legislation to parliament as soon as possible and hope parliament will agree. But the legislation is the prerogative of parliament. And the cut, the reduction of salaries is the responsibility of parliament, is a legislation. And it is customary it is normal that no sitting parliament makes changes to his, to their salary while they're in office. You make it for the next parliament. You don't make it for yourself. Because if you can knock it down with 10%, you can jack it up with 20% as well. But this is not about 10, 5, 1, or 2%. And the editorial in the newspaper today is hiding behind the Christian party. Oh, but it ain't corrupts. They're defending President, State Secretary Knops. It is not Knops who started it, they're saying. It started with the Christian party. 
And so what? The Christian party or any party in St. Martin has the right to table a proposal, has the right to table a motion, has the right to put forward an opinion or a request. But Mr. Chairman, Madam Chair Lady, no state secretary, whether they believe they are the president of St. Martin or not, should instruct the government, if you want my help, because this is another continuation of indecent proposals. This is now episode 12, season three, okay? Another indecent proposal. We know from the day the hurricane struck that we won't be able to balance budgets for the next couple of years, probably. But you make us feel comfortable. I got a bag of money here. Just agree to these few conditions, and you're gone clean. And when you accept it, and you're looking for the key to open the bag, or the bag is by the World Bank. And we go by the World Bank. We got our procurement policies. And by the way, the Dutch say you can't get this, and you can't get that. And then when you ask, then the Dutch comes forward. Because they tell you to talk to the World Bank. And when you ask, they tell you about their new conditions. And one of them, they arm wrestling with government, and government don't seem to be able to arm wrestle with parliament. And over what? 375,000 guilders for the whole year. 375,000 guilders. And if the parliament does not agree by the hook or the crook, St. Martin will sink. So go throw rocks at your politicians. Go throw rocks at the same people you vote for. Because if they do not relinquish 10%, then there is nothing and St. Martin will sink.